going to do exercise 11.3, working with a segmented income statement. Middleton Associates is a consulting firm that specializes in information systems for construction and landscaping companies. The firm has two offices, one in Toronto and one in Vancouver. The firm classifies the direct costs of consulting jobs as variable costs. A segmented contribution format income statement for the company's most recent year is given below. And I've replicated that on the screen for you here. We see our total company, along with everything expressed as a percentage of sales, broken down by both Toronto and Vancouver, with the same um, percentage of sales breakdown as well. Required, number one, by how much would the company's operating income increase if Vancouver increased its sales by $75,000 per year? Assume no change in cost behavior patterns. Well, that last line becomes extremely important. It doesn't say assume no changes in costs. It says no changes in cost behavior patterns, which means when we look down at our, our, at our uh, percentages, if sales in Vancouver rose by 70%, we would still expect variable expenses to be 60% of that. We would still expect our contribution margin to be 40% of that now. What I've done down here is I've given you a wrong answer, and it's an answer that many of you have probably arrived at. If we increase our sales by $75,000, the argument says, if our contribution margin ratio is 40%, our operating income should increase by our contribution margin ratio, assuming no change in cost behaviors. But that's not what the question says. It doesn't say there's no change in cost behavior. It says there's no change in cost behavior patterns. So this $30,000 we arrived at by taking the increase in our sales and multiplying it by a contribution margin ratio. So the 30,000 is a proper answer for saying that Vancouver's contribution margin would increase by $30,000. However, Look at the traceable fixed expenses. These are fixed expenses that are traceable to Vancouver. $90,000 or 15% of sales. If we assume no change in cost behavior patterns, we would expect that that $75,000 would also come with a 15% traceable fixed cost increase because we need to have the same 15% which would give us a 25% segment margin. So the proper way to calculate the increase in operating expenses, first of all, is to recognize that the pattern must stay the same. We must end up with a 25% increase in our segment margin. So once we have that, would that be the answer? Well, let's go down to the next line here. What do we have? Common fixed expenses. Now, what are they? We have to use some logic here. Common fixed expenses are not traceable to any of these two offices. So if we increase sales in Vancouver, it should not affect common fixed expenses because those expenses are not traceable. Now, if we assume that common fixed expenses would go up just by increasing sales in Vancouver, then some of those common fixed expenses must clearly be traceable. So we will assume that the common fixed expenses will not change with an increase in Vancouver holding Toronto constant. Here's the deal. If we increase the sales in Vancouver and we find that our common fixed expenses do increase, then we've calculated our common fixed expenses wrong because some of it must be traceable. If there is a change in Vancouver, holding everything else constant, and a change in common fixed expenses, then some of that common is being called common when it's actually traceable. So we can say common fixed expenses will not change. So if we multiply the increase in sales, $75,000, by what our contribution, our, our, sorry, our segment margin would be, our segment margin will increase by $18,750, our common fixed expenses will still stay the same, which means that 18750 will go right down to operating income. So operating income increases by 18750 Now, this is one of those questions where 
you must be careful with the wording. And that's why the vocabulary of accounting is extremely important. When new terms are given to you, don't just breeze over them and say, let's just get to the formula, that's what it's all about. That's a small part of it. That's a small part. You must understand the vocabulary. And if you understand the vocabulary, you would have seen no change in cost behavior patterns. I know what that means. The percentages are constant so that I know what costs move. And then in the end, it's being able to interpret what that number means that even adds more value to what you're doing. There we go. There's number one. Let's look at number two. Refer to the original data. Well, it's still up on the screen. Assume that sales in Toronto increased by 50,000 next year and that sales in Vancouver remain unchanged. Assume no changes in fixed costs. Now that one's important. Number one said no changes in cost behavior patterns. This now is saying no change in fixed costs. Well, we have traceable fixed costs and common fixed costs. And at this point, some students get confused and think of traceable fixed costs as variable fixed costs. Well, there's no such thing as a variable fixed cost. No change in fixed costs, which means no change in traceable or common fixed costs. No change in fixed costs, period, whatever they're called. Number uh, Part A, prepare a new segmented income statement for the company using the above format. Show both amounts and percentages. Okay, so let's do with that before we get to B. So all we can do is we will just replicate exactly what we have. And here we are on the screen. This is what we started with. So we're going to increase sales in Toronto by 50,000. So we're going to make this 200,000. And what I've done is I've made sure that our contribution margin will stay the same. That's all because it says no change in fixed costs. So this 78 is coded in as a 78,000. Uh, so all of these are calculated in as formulas based on sales. So if we change our sales to 200,000 because they increased to 50,000, it'll just the spreadsheet will just change for you if you programmed it right. If you sell put the, the right formulas in the sales. Notice that our variable costs still stay at 30 percent. Our contribution margins still stay at 70 percent. But we used to have 105,000 in contribution margin. Now we have 140,000, an increase of 35,000. 35, we have to ask ourselves, does that make sense? Sales increased by 50,000. Contribution margin ratio is 70%. 70% 70 of 50,000 is 35. Our, our contribution margin should have increased by 35, and it did. Notice that the traceable fixed expenses stay constant at $78,000 and that our segment margin increases by the full amount of our contribution margin increase because it didn't tell us to keep the cost behavior pattern constant. It just says the fixed cost is constant. In the first one, it said the relationship here, the pattern was constant. Here, we're talking about the dollar value is constant. Again, be very, very careful when you read the question and take a moment and, and repeat this to yourself. What is being asked of me? And make sure you know. Don't just breeze over it. Make sure you know what's being asked of you so you deliver what's being asked of you. So there we go. We're not done. Hang tight. B, observe from the income statement that you have prepared that the contribution margin ratio for Toronto has remained unchanged at 70%. And yes, we see that. But the segment margin, margin ratio has changed. Notice it's 31%. Previously, it was 18%. How do you explain the change in the segment margin ratio? Very simple. We explain the change in the segment margin ratio because the fixed cost, the dollar cost, stayed constant, which will change the pattern of costs because we had an increase in contribution margin without an increase in fixed costs. So more of that heads down to the bottom line. The pattern of costs are variable. The cost itself was fixed. So that's how we explain it is we had an increase in contribution margin without a corresponding increase in our traceable fixed cost. There's 11.3 and I bet you thought it was a lot simpler than that that it wasn't that tricky. But there you go. If you were doing part A and part B and checking your answers and seeing that I'm not getting, I'm not getting it right. I'm getting one, one right, one wrong. What, what am I doing wrong? It's because you weren't paying attention to the language 
of the question. There you go. Exercise 11.4 continues on from exercise 11.3. Working with a segmented income statement. Refer to the data in exercise 11.3. Assume that Vancouver sales by major market are as follows, and I put it on the screen here for you in Excel. We see that we have exactly what we had for Vancouver, but we've broken down Vancouver into a construction and a landscaping market. The company would like to initiate an intensive advertising campaign in one of the two markets during the next month. The campaign would cost $8,000. Marketing studies indicate that such a campaign would increase sales in the construction market by $70,000 or increase sales in the landscaping market by 60,000. In which of the markets would you recommend that the company focus its advertising campaign? All right, well, what I've done over here is I've, I've put down the calculations that I need to do. I have my increase in contribution margin, less my increase in, fix, in traceable fixed costs will give me my increase in operating income. I know that I'm gonna spend 8,000 in each market. Question is, I don't know how much Contribution margin will increase in each margin. I'm told that my sales will increase by 70,000 in the construction market, and I will multiply that by my contribution margin ratio, which will give me 24,500 minus the 8,000 means my increase in my office segment margin and also my operating income will increase by 16,500. All right. That's the target we have to beat. In landscaping, we know that, or we're told, that sales could increase by 60,000 with this advertising campaign. And we're going to multiply that by the contribution margin ratio for landscaping, which will give us 30,000 minus the 8,000, means we have an increase in 22,000. So given that we have 8,000 to spend in either construction or either landscaping, it makes sense to spend the money in the landscaping market because it'll increase our segment, the office segment margin by 22,000. And since common fixed expenses would not be affected by that, that segment margin should filter right down to the bottom line to operating income. So we can say yes to this campaign. Well, there's another part to that question, number two. Let's have a look there. In exercise 11.3, Vancouver shows 90,000 in traceable fixed expenses. What happened to the $90,000 in this exercise? Well, let's see if we can figure out. Vancouver showed 90,000 in traceable fixed expenses, right? Well, of that 90,000 that, that was traceable to Vancouver, 52,000 of it was traceable just to landscaping. So we'll just record the 52 down here. 20 of it was recordable to construction, so we'll put that there for a total of 72. The other, the common fixed expenses are 18,000. 72 plus 18 is 90. What we're saying here is that, sure, we can attribute $90,000 in fixed costs to the existence of Vancouver, but within Vancouver, we can attribute 52,000 of it to the existence of the landscaping market. That if we got rid of the landscaping market, We'd get rid of 52,000, we'd have 38,000 in traceable fixed costs left to Vancouver, with 20 of it being traceable to construction and 18 being just common. So in Vancouver, you may have a Vancouver office manager who oversees both the construction and the landscaping market. Well, that's a common fixed cost to Vancouver that's not traceable to either landscaping or construction. Remember, a traceable fixed cost at one level as we go deeper, some of that may become common at a lower level of detail. So we went from Vancouver down to the level of the market. So what we applied to Vancouver, 90,000, could not be traced to each of the individual markets. 52 and 20 could, so 72 was traceable, 18 was common. We still have the same 90,000 in fixed costs because up here, this is Vancouver. Traceable fixed expenses of 72, common fixed expenses of, of 18, that's our fixed expenses. Our total fixed expenses are 90. Nothing has happened to it. It's just we were able to divide it a little bit finer. There we go. That's done.